In this demonstration, we're going to be showcasing Cognos Analytics 11.2 by analyzing the performance of a fictitious chain of coffee shops by stepping into the shoes of key personnel. We'll be able to see how the IBM Cognos Analytics and IBM Planning Analytics working together can help us to gain insights quickly to make effective decisions. As regional manager, I need to monitor our coffee shops across the country and help my store managers achieve excellent results. I need to know, how did our stores around the country do this week? How can we optimize our staffing levels during busy periods? And are there any significant variations in staff costs over the year? Now each month, our systems produce data on inventory, sales, gross revenue, and performance against our targets, which is stored in a relational format. This has relative time, navigation paths, and key KPIs. However, we also have a planning analytics revenue cube that has been authored to show sales, revenue and staff cost information by store. It's so easy to use PA data in Cognos Analytics. All I need to do is create or open a PA data server connection, navigate to the cube and simply create a data module from the more option. Now with this data in place, I can therefore jump straight into creating a dashboard and look for insights, and I'll start with my relational data. To start, I want to see how all our stores are doing overall by looking at some high-level metrics. And for this, I'm going to use our data module. I'd like to see how much have we sold in total this week, what was our goal, and how many orders have we done in total. As I add data to my dashboard, Cognos assists me by automatically choosing the best visualization to represent the data. In this example, it has chosen summaries for the KPIs, which is perfect for what I'm trying to achieve. You can see that orders has been abbreviated to 12K, but I'd like to see the exact number. And luckily for me, there's some really powerful formatting options available to me to display the data how I see fit. So in this example, I'll choose number and remove the abbreviation so we can see exactly how many orders we've sold. And that's 11,954, which is perfect. The last high level metric I'd like to add is our spoilage expense. And at a glance, it looks like our spoilage is slightly on the low side. But again, this is something I can investigate on a store by store basis later. Now that I've had a look at some high level metrics, I'd like to start exploring on that store by store basis. I need to know whether there's any variation across the regions and whether there are any stores that are performing particularly well or badly. So I'll start by asking the Cognos AI Assistant. And this assistant is an embedded AI tool that helps you gain quick insights into your data by simplifying your analytics. It's a great starting point for AI, and you can start by simply selecting help and it will guide you through your journey. For instance, you can type or click show data and associate with a data source. And you can also ask it to suggest questions to ask based on the context of the data. For instance, we can select a question which hour has the top sales versus target? And straight away, it provides a range of visualizations to help answer that question. We can see line charts, area charts, and also the all new 11.2 box plot visualization that Tassos showed us earlier. Not only that, but the AI system is so powerful, it can also automatically create a full dashboard from the context of that question. In this new dashboard, we can see a sales versus target tab with a mix of visualizations answering that question. And in addition, we have a tab based on the hour dimension with additional charts showing data such as food compared to sales versus target, as well as other time-based visualizations. Now this dashboard creates an excellent starting point if you're looking to create a dashboard on the fly. And even if you don't want to keep the dashboard, you can pin any visualizations that you like to use later. For now, I'm going to go back to the original dashboard and in this instance, I'm going to simply type my own question as I'm looking for my sales by store address. So I'll type, tell me about sales by store address. And you can see as I type, Cognos's type ahead functionality matches the correct column names from my curated data model. And in a few short moments, the AI system produces a range of visualizations to answer that request. I'll take the suggested column chart and add it to my dashboard but I want to add another level of detail to my analysis and I'm going to explore my sales by day of the week. 
I can drag the day of the week data item to one of my guided data slots or simply drop it on the canvas and allow the built-in smarts to determine a recommended visualization to help me represent that data in the most appropriate way. But I can easily switch this to a different visualization if I prefer. And here I'm presented with a list of recommended visualizations based on the data. So I'm actually gonna go for a stat column and I can see now a column for each day of the week with the stores represented by the different colors. Now let's examine this chart in more detail. In actual fact, it's pretty difficult to immediately assess a store's individual performance by just looking. However, with Cognos's built-in smarts, I can gain insights with the simple click of a button. As I toggle on my insights, Cognos will show me, in plain English, the average daily sales for stores this week, as well as any meaningful differences. And I can see clearly that on Tuesdays, 5 Fountain Street is doing unusually low sales, but on Sundays, 30 Fentrett Street is doing unusually high sales. Now this is definitely something I'd like to investigate, and perhaps Fentrett Street are doing an offer that we could replicate in other stores to improve performance across the region. Now my next objective is that we'd like to take a look at a view of hourly sales, as we've had an issue with staffing levels, and I'd like to make sure we have the right number of trained staff on duty during busy periods. So let's take a look at sales, hour, and product group and add this to the dashboard. Now I'm going to take a look at other recommended visualizations on offer. So I'm gonna choose an area chart to see how that looks. And I think that works really well. So in this visualization, we have the hours of the day represented on the X axis. It's showing that sales of beverages in particular are peaking in the mid morning hours. So we'll need to make sure we have enough staff to cover those time periods and maximize our revenue. However, before we do that, we really need to check our staff costs in each sales outlet, as I suspect we may have a problem. I mentioned earlier in the demo that we have a planning analytics cube based on that revenue for this task. New to 11.2, we can now use smart such as the AI system with OLAP data sources, such as planning analytics cubes, PowerPlay cubes, and Microsoft analysis services cubes. To do this, I'm going to go back to the AI Assistant, show data, and associate with the Planning Analytics Revenue Cube. I'm interested in staff costs, so I'll simply ask it to tell me about staff costs and sales by store name. The Cognos AI Assistant provides a range of visualizations to answer this particular request. And this time, I'm going to use a line and column visualization to see how the proportions match up. In the results, we can see a column for staff costs and a line for sales, and there is a clear correlation between these two measures, as I would expect. The more sales, the higher the staff costs. However, I'd like to check the ratio between the two measures, and to do this, I'll create a simple calculation to see staff costs as a percentage of sales. As you can see, it's really easy to create simple calculations. And if I needed more complex calculations, I could simply use the calculation editor where I have a wide range of functions to help build my expression. We also have information, preview, validation and comments all within the calculation editor. I'll also take a note at this stage to ask my colleague Nigel to add this calculation to the planning analytics cube. Now we have a new calculation, let's create a new tab in the dashboard to review it and do some more analysis around staff costs and I'll call this tab Staff Costs. If I look to add a new visualization, you can see in 11.2, we have a wide range of visualizations to pick from. In fact, with the addition of the new radar and box plot visualizations, we have 35 out of the box, plus the ability to add custom visualizations very easily. We support custom visualizations such as Chartist, D3 and Google Charts and many more. For this analysis, we'll add a simple line chart. I showed that you can add data to the dashboard by simply dragging and dropping to either the data slots in the visualization or onto the canvas, but you can just as easily search for data items using the data slots in the fields. I'll add month to our X axis, sales outlet to color, and then our staff cost percentage calculation to our Y axis. At this point in time, we're using the Cube's actual version, so we can also toggle on Cognos's built-in time series forecasting that now works across OLAP data sources, 
and see the options we have available to us. Cognos will automatically forecast a number of periods ahead and in this example with six months data, it is providing two months of forecast data. We can also choose to ignore some periods, choose a confidence level and adjust the seasonality. Cognos will then select from nine different forecasting model types to generate a sophisticated and independent forecast for each of the products on my chart. And based on this forecast, we can see that staff cost as a percentage of sales ratio is going to remain high over the summer. However, I'm not convinced this chart is giving me the level of detail I need, so I'll simply change the visualization to a cross tab and see a much more detailed information. I can spot rows and columns to have the months along the top. And as you can see, we can expand the nested children on this OLAP data source, which makes working with planning analytics data so much easier in Cognos Analytics. To make the crosstab easy to read and display any outliers, I think I'll add some conditionally formatted rules to the crosstab. I'll add a rule so that all cells where the staff cost to sales ratio is greater than 55% is highlighted red. And this just takes a few mouse clicks. And there are options to add indicators too. I can build up my rules and I'll add another rule so that any cells where the staff cost to sales ratio is lower than 40% is highlighted green. At this point, I'm looking at my actual data, but the dashboard allows you to review forecast data as well. And as I scroll through the cross tab, there looks to be a problem with the 30 Fenchurch Street store in June, with a poor forecast for the rest of the year as well. The sales to cost ratio seems particularly high, and I need to speak to my finance team about this. In Cognos Analytics 11.1, .1, we introduced Slack integration, and it's now possible to share this dashboard with my finance team using the Slack collaboration platform. So I'll send them a message via the 2021 forecast channel. When you collaborate via Slack, not only do you get an image of the dashboard included in the message, but a direct link to the dashboard you are commenting on. So it's now over to Nigel Sutton, who will take over the investigation using planning analytics. I've received a notification via Slack and opening it up, it's clear that Will has some concerns with the revenue plan. I can even open up the dashboard that prompted the concern to see for myself. The dashboard is looking directly at the revenue plan in IBM Planning Analytics. So I'll open that up to make appropriate adjustments to address the concerns. This is the model and it's broken down into areas of responsibility. HR data is automatically loaded to provide staff assumptions. Scheduling and allocation of work can then be done by employee install with costs instantly calculated. A volume demand plan is produced in parallel by product and day. And all of this produces our net revenue position. Planning analytics enables you to facilitate collaborative planning using workflow and an intuitive web browser interface. For example, targets could be set centrally, cascaded down to the stores who then submit their plans. This iterative process ensures regular updates to the overall plan and more accurate forecasts. There is also tight integration with Excel for those that require it. All of this is totally customizable. For today, I'll stay logged in as one individual to simply address the concerns raised by Will. Looking at net revenue, I see the same information that was surfaced in Cognos Analytics, but here I can change the numbers and I have many options to achieve this. The store on the Strand is doing well, uh, particularly in September and November. Looking at Fenchurch Street, however, we have a number of months to address. In this simple use case, we could analyze both costs and revenue in order to improve the percentage metric. But for today, we'll assume the issue uh, lies solely with staffing. In June, we don't want to decrease the hours for Quail Octavia, as he is a senior barista that's providing training in that month. I'll ring fence his allocation 
and decrease the subtotal. Proportional adjustments have now been made for the rest of the team. I'll go on to make other adjustments for the other months. Going back to net revenue, I see the updates instantly. There's still a potential issue with December, but I'll leave that for now. Incidentally, if I preferred to work in Excel, I could. Here's the same data in Excel. The planning analytics for Excel add-in enables you to work with the data in many ways and is bi-directional. So you can use Excel to capture data and commit directly back to the server. The Excel add-in's powerful reporting and analysis also works across any data sources you have in place for Cognos Analytics, as well as the cubes in Planning Analytics. Let's look at an example for each. Cognos Analytics can sit across multiple data sources. Let's use Excel to query the data warehouse that is one of the many sources that Cognos Analytics sits on top of for enterprise reporting. Here, I'll just look at some historical sales data across the organization. So you can use the familiarity of Excel to explore, analyze, and report on your trusted data that Cognos Analytics connects to. Using Excel directly against Planning Analytics is even more powerful as you can write back to the cubes and work with data in many different ways. Let's create a staff and revenue planning template for the store managers to use. This is simply an alternative to the workspace interface we looked at previously. Note that the DBRW formula here uh, provides the two-way real-time connectivity between Excel and the underlying planning analytics model. To synchronize the two views for when I change either the store of the, or the version, I'll simply use standard Excel formulae. I'll add a title, uh, remove grid lines. And publish for wider consumption. So I was able to use my authoring skills in Excel and share the content either directly in Excel with other users that have access or within Workspace. Let's go back to Workspace. Looking at the available content on the left hand side, I can see the newly published Excel template that I can simply drag into the canvas and start working with it. Let's look at forecasting in more detail and use the strand store as an example. The forecast is populated with actuals up until the 20th of June and the rest of the year are forecast figures. Drilling down on July, I can see the daily figures and oddly, there is no value for the 1st of July. This could be due to the store being closed or an error as it could have been manually set. Let's restate the plan using the inbuilt AI forecast engine. Essentially, time series data can be instantly assessed for any trend or seasonality and statistical approaches for projecting forwards are evaluated and executed on your behalf. You have lots of control over how the forecast is calculated. For example, let's look at a selection of products, but only the actuals up until the 20th of June. With one click, I'm able to select how much data is evaluated, level of confidence, whether I want to save the results back to the cube and if I want to capture user date timestamp of forecast approaches taken. 
I can preview each product and see the different forecast approaches taken due to the different trends and seasonality that may exist for each product. Without being a statistician, I have a baseline forecast specific to each product based on its own trend and or seasonality. We can see the visual result almost instantly. It's all been calculated at the daily level and the forecast is from June the 21st onwards. This can of course be overlaid and tracked for accuracy as and when actuals or more business information become available. Cognos Analytics has comprehensive reporting and dashboarding capabilities, such as report bursting, storyboarding, and the AI assistant to unearth even more insights. All of this can be over both relational and OLAP data, such as planning analytics that we're seeing here. In planning analytics, we've seen an example of the versatility of how it can accommodate requirements. We were able to look at any level of detail make manual adjustments to SAF costs, automatically produce an AI forecast with an instant visual update. If we were revert back to the original dashboard in Cognos Analytics, we can see that the concerns have been addressed. And now over to Sasha, who will be showing you the benefits of Cognos Analytics reporting over planning analytics data. Thanks, Nigel. Let's finish up with Cognos Analytics report authoring over our planning analytics data and show you how you can operationalize your insights, scenarios, plans and budgets with pixel perfect reports. Dashboards are great for interaction and high level analytics, but often you want a more detailed pixel perfect report, whether you want an invoice, a multi page annual report, tables of contents, detailed store performance reports and so on. You can link dashboards and reports with a drill through. Here in 30 Fenchurch Street, Nigel's rework of the staff costs means that most of the red has been removed, but December is still showing as red at 55%. Now I can simply drill through from the dashboard to the report, either using the little drill through icon or with the right click menu. This runs our store staff forecast costs prompted report for 30 Fenchurch Street, and this more detailed report gives us additional measures for each month for gross sales net revenue and staff costs, and I've extended the conditional formatting on the staff costs percent to show each month as red, amber or green. Here is the red 55% for December that we saw on the dashboard. The chart shows these staff costs by month with a baseline for the average staff cost at 43%, so we can track our performance in relation to the average across all stores. The report viewer itself has built in interactivity. And because this is dimensional data, you can drill up and drill down, say on January, to see the measures by day, for example. You can also filter, sort, summarize, and explore with lots of options available right at your fingertips, whether you want to exclude members, move members, replace them, expand or collapse. For example, here we expand January. You can also choose how you deal with zero values. And you can even swap the rows and columns. You can even add your own calculations on the fly. For example, selecting January and February, I get a number of options that I can choose and all without changing the underlying report. Now, as well as drilling through from a dashboard to a report or a report to a report, you can also run these reports independently. So you have a lot of flexibility in best meeting your reporting and analytics needs with Cognos Analytics over planning analytics data. You can run the report as HTML, PDF, Excel, Excel data, CSV or XML. Let's rerun the report and this time I'm going to select the first four stores. This is a simple prompt, but you can also set up sophisticated prompt pages, cascading prompts and also add prompts to the page. There are lots of options for creating exactly the kinds of reports that you need. Now we are comparing multiple stores and we can see in the chart how they are forecast to perform relative to the average. Let's pop into edit mode and look at the new baseline options I mentioned in the previous session. There are many properties that you can set up in report authoring based on the object that you're working with. Looking at the properties of the visualization, the baselines are here in the annotation section. 
We added two new baseline options, which allow you to create more advanced baselines using query calculations and layout calculations to add to the other three options which were added in Cognos Analytics 11.1.7. The baseline for average staff cost is a query calculation for our staff cost percent. And you can also add a label and specify which way to read it and set the line style and color to suit your requirements. While we are here, we've also updated the yes, no options in the properties to toggle buttons for consistency across Cognos Analytics. For example, here we can choose whether to show or hide the item access title. Let's go back to our content and look at our report options. As well as being able to run reports interactively, you can schedule them to run. Looking at the properties of our report, you can specify how much run history or how many output versions you want to keep, and you can schedule the report to run. Daily, weekly, monthly, by trigger, a number of different options are available. And what output you want. For example, HTML, PDF and Excel and also how you want to deliver it. Do you want to save the report? Do you want to send it by email? And the summary pane on the right keeps track of what you've selected. Finally, as well as running reports interactively, you can send tailored outputs with report bursting. This is where a report runs once and generates a separate output for each coffee shop or department or customer or supplier. Our store staff costs burst report is a variation of the report we've been looking at with the monthly measures for each coffee shop and their staff cost percent by month on the right. The report runs for all stores, and here is our Fenchurch Street store. We want each coffee shop to get its own information, so we can run this report now, or of course we can schedule it. Let's run it in the background, and we want outputs in HTML and Excel. A simple switch to turn on report bursting, and again you can specify how you want it delivered. In this case, we want our stores to get the report from the Cognos portal, so we will simply save the report. And let's run it. No other BI vendor does report authoring or bursting as well as we do out of the box. And the message up here tells me that it's been completed. And we can view the versions. Here is the HTML report for 30 Fenchurch Street, which they will see when they select this report from the portal. And here is the Excel report that 102 The Strand will see. So this brings us to the end of this demo. And I trust that we've shown you how using Cognos Analytics and Planning Analytics together brings you the great dashboarding, AI assistant, and report authoring capabilities over planning analytics data with integrated access to flex and change numbers in your planning, budgeting, forecasting, and scenario modeling, and immediately report and analyze the results. It's just like tea and biscuits, better together.